Welcome to the making of a pilot. In this series, we're following Jonathan as he pursues his private pilot certificate. He witnessing his journey from start to finish as we work together to help him achieve his dream. There we go, just like that. My name's Lewis, Jonathan's instructor and your guide throughout this series. Whether you're in flight training or you're a pilot in need of a refresher, this series of videos is for you. So don't forget to like it, share it and subscribe so you never miss an episode of the making of a pilot. Ludix Aviation videos are edited to be as entertaining as possible. This may remove context. Many procedures, situations, explanations and flight phases have been edited out. Do not use for instructional purposes. This video is for entertainment purposes only. All right, boys and girls, we're starting with a soft field takeoff today. Last episode, we worked on these and short field takeoffs and landings too. So if you missed that, it's linked for you. This here, I'll call your base leg. Uh, many departures prior to your arrival. Uh, yeah, go. Track three zero nine as soon as you can. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. The boy. Well done, man. Great soft field takeoff. Thank you. Today though, Jonathan's gonna get to grips with instrument flying. For the private pilot certificate, you're required to log three hours, and today will be Jonathan's chance to get some experience with that. It's not easy, however, as you're gonna see today. That's already off. Departure frequency, one Ah, my seal is broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might need some flying eyes. You, you just took off flying eyes to, uh, I know. <laughs> to put those on. Like, uh, what, do you feel a massive difference? Oh, yeah. I hear a lot of wind noise That's right now. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't think of a better way to explain how good flying eyes are other than that. They eliminate the head pain I used to get from my old sunglasses from wearing them underneath my headset. Now with flying eyes, I can actually wear them under my ear cup and fly in comfort. As Jonathan said too, as soon as he took his flying eyes off and put the foggles on, his ear seal was broken, which caused a load of noise for him. That happens with other sunglasses too. So if you're not flying with flying eyes, I highly recommend that you fix that. Get 10% off by using my discount code LUDIX on the flying eyes website. The link is in the description. I cannot recommend recommend flying eyes enough for pilots. Yeah, actually keep the turn coming 300. Zero, zero. Oh, 300. Zero, zero. Yeah, my apologies. You know, I'm going to try and be an air traffic controller today, but I mean, there's, there's a reason why I'm not a controller. <laughs> so as we said before, instrument flying is just all about keeping those eyes shifting. As soon as those eyes stop moving, something is going to be off. Got to keep that scan going. So I understand I'm under the uh, hood here yes. for simulating clouds, but yes. Yes. this magnetic heading here, yes. a compass, I can still be able to look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's inside. Yeah, obviously. exactly. You, you, you know, you have to be using that as well. Right. So really, when you're under the foggles, the, the foggles don't actually really simulate well enough how it is to fly in clouds. We need to fly in actual clouds, which we will, we will do one day. Okay. Um, they, they really don't, because you could cheat a little bit by looking at the compass, you could then see down here. Right. I'm sure you can see some of the ground down below you. I can, yeah. You know, like, it, I mean, it's not the same thing. It's not, but, you know, it's, it's what we use, so. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to climb, and what I want to see in the climb is I want you to maintain an airspeed of... 80 knots in the climb. 80 knots in the climb, yeah, okay. 80 knots in the climb, I'll let you know when. And we're gonna go up to 2,500 feet. 80 knots, 2,500. Yes, and uh, heading 300, the same heading. All right, let's go, let's do that climb. 2,500 feet, 80 knots, 300, let's go. All right. This is called a constant airspeed climb, and it's very much a part of the private pilot airman certification standards. This is something that you'll have to demonstrate to the examiner on your private pilot check ride. Why though? Well, even though a private pilot isn't authorized to go into a cloud without an instrument rating and being on an IFR flight plan, of course, there have still been times in the past and in the present where someone gets into one inadvertently. In that situation, you need to be a master of the instrument scan, instrument interpretation, and aircraft control, the three pillars of instrument flying. These sorts of maneuvers, while seemingly simple, are crucial for a pilot to master. Lake Fox traffic, Skyhawk 734, Mike Golf on the northeast side of the lake. Yeah, 1800, climbing 2500, heading northwest bound Lake Apoca. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Good climb. I like it. Northbound, head back to Stanford, up the back side of the towers, last call, Bithwell. In instrument flying, when having to multitask, it's very easy to overfocus on one thing. We all do it. Set Number something, two, you line idiot, line and f hold it. No, get it back! Shut up, you dick! And regardless of how you stop that from happening, you must do so. Even something as simple as the level off can throw you off if you don't continue your scan. 
And that includes not only looking at your flight instruments, but everything else too. For example, here, Jonathan's hyper-focused on his flight instruments and has forgotten to set his power for his new altitude. That's better, that's your power setting. Without setting the power, he had to keep the nose pitched up to maintain altitude, which reduced his airspeed and made for an uncomfortable cruise. With his power set correctly, he can lower the nose, get his speed back and retrim. Simple things that we learned at the beginning of training are now made difficult all through the loss of vision outside the aircraft. This is why this sort of instrument training is so crucial. The, the focus fully went onto that level off, pulled the power back way too much, added it back in, got it back, no problem. But, you know, it's the same level off procedure that we always do, it's just you can't see outside. So now what I want you to do to divide your attention even more, I want you to do the cruise checklist while you're under the foggles. Cruise checklist. This may seem weird to highlight, but there's a reason for it. Dividing attention is difficult, and even something as simple as a checklist can cause problems. If we take our attention away from our instruments for too long, you can bet that something is going to be off. You can see here, we've got a slight climb rate, and our altitude is increasing away from our target. Not much, but there's definitely a change there, and that's all because Jonathan's attention went away from solely focusing on those instruments. Crazy, innit? Just that little extra diversion of attention could change everything. When doing things like checklists, I like to do a couple of items at a time and then go back to the instruments. Do a couple more, then go back. And remember, there are no prizes for doing checklists the quickest. Fly the aircraft. Hi right, man, let's talk about these unusual attitude recoveries. So what it is, basically, you get yourself into a cloud inadvertently. And you come out of that cloud in an unusual attitude. Now there's two ones that we do. Uh, nose up, nose down, and both of them will be banking, uh, will, be, will be turning. So... If you are in a nose-high unusual attitude, what's your main concern there? Stalling. Stalling, right. Morning. Exactly. First thing, get your nose down. Yes. Yes. Nose down, level the wings, and obviously, as you're doing it, go full power. What's the concern if you are banking nose low, increasing speed? Putting over stress on the aircraft. Yes. Absolutely. That's the biggest thing. Um, so. When your nose low, you want to uh, pull the power to, to idle, level the wings first, and then raise the nose. Okay. Uh, because you're going to see that that airspeed is going to increase. Um, but yeah, cool. Just fly around like this for a minute. If you uh, give me a left turn to the west. Now, unusual as this may be, see what I did. Unusual attitudes are part of the PPL ACS2, so these will be tested. Why? Well, people have inadvertently entered a cloud, listened to the body signals, and come out of it upside down, which in itself is very unusual. Hence, why we have to know how to recover. Nice, nice, nice. All right, man, my controls. My controls. My controls. Uh, we are going to do some unusual attitudes. I'm going to light us up. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your head down, close your eyes, and I'm going <laughs> to play with the plane a little bit. All right. Okay. So... We'll start pretty, pretty tame first. Oh my god, I'm already like all messed up. <laughs> already gone up. This not, is unreal. Not even done anything. So, hold on a second. Hold on, let me, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Uh, let me do a little bit more of this. A little bit more of this. A bit more of that. Uh, how are the wings positioned for you right now? Right now, I feel like we're banking right. I feel like we're banking right. Look up. We're straight level. Not even close. What the <laughs> I love it. Nice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Head down. Close your eyes. Okay, okay. This this will be an unusual attitude recovery. Lake Pocket Traffic, Sky Seven Three Four, Mike Off, West Side, uh, North West Side of Lake, uh, twenty five hundred feet. Unusual attitude recovery is Lake Apopka. Here we go. Hey. All right. We're gonna play with it a little bit. Give you a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of a little bit of that. And go ahead and recover that. Beautiful. Nose down, power up, level the wings. Love it. Get out of that stalling scenario. And then all you're looking to do is just level off. You don't have to get back to 2,500 feet. Just level the plane off. Got it. Your, your body signals are probably still telling you the wrong thing. There we go, we're back level. We're back level. There you go, recovered it. Cool. Wait, Mike Trolls? Mike Trolls. <laughs> that was awesome. Sky <laughs> Skyhawk at 2,500 feet, going to pass over uh, Lake Yale, going to push it in south eastbound uh, Leeford. How do you feel now? I'm in my seat. 
Oh yeah. Close for you at steep turn. It's just an excuse for me to practice. That's all it is. All right, we're gonna come out of that. All right. Oh the, yeah. Your controls. My controls. Your controls. Oh man. There you go. Nose down. Level the wings. Holy cow. This right here is why this sort of training is so important for private pilot students. Jonathan recovered, but has put us into a nosedive towards the water. We're still at 2,600 feet though, so I'm letting him go to see how long it takes him to notice. At above 1,000 feet per minute on the descent though, in a real situation, this could get ugly very quickly. This is what it looks like when you're trusting your body signals rather than the instruments. It makes you do crazy things like banking for no reason. South Park there, red and white tail, Skyhawk. Man, this is a lot more difficult than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're stopping the descent though. There we go. Okay. <laughs> what, so, holy moly. Why Why did you start the turn? I don't know why I got <laughs> the turn. That's, um, the, that's the body signals telling you, yeah. you know, that, that, you're, that you're wrong. You've got to forget those. Yep. That's, that's, that's the exact reason we do this practice. Now, if you think about it, that was completely pilot induced because we were nose high right right we were nose high and we you know you, you did the right thing you got the nose down um, but you put the nose way too far down the other too side so down. we started descending so right. we we were we, we've lost now probably close to like 900 800 900 feet <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that those body signals are f you up it's it happens man my controls your controls do it again this is the fun of it so when you're in that nose high situation right Put that full power in as well. Yeah, um, full power, because you don't want to stall. Exactly. Bring the nose down. Bring right. the, yep. Exactly. Bring that nose down. And you can, honestly, you can bring that nose just to the horizon. Like, using your attitude indicator is going right. to be your best friend there. That's right, yep. Just bring it down to the horizon. You can bring it down to the horizon, let that speed uh, uh, increase. Okay. Uh, oh, again. This is probably the most fun thing for a flight instructor. Playing around with a plane. Okay, here we go. And your controls. My controls. Your controls. Power. 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 Uh, your nose high. Get that power in. There you go. That's better. You're stopping it there. You're ignoring those signals. You're using your instruments. There you go. Level it off and stabilize for a second. This time, Johnny V didn't put us into a dive towards the water, which tells me he's actively fighting and winning against his body signals, which means he's learned. This isn't a video to make him look bad. On the contrary, flight training is the time to make mistakes and use your instructor to learn from and get over hurdles. He's done that here, but that's only half the battle. Now we have to do unusual attitudes with the nose low, but not before he corrects that power setting with the nose high. We just do this like every lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is all he's going to be from now on. I want to see you get that power in there when that nose is high. You're doing the nose, but just not doing the power. So remember that on this one. And your controls. My controls. Your controls. Boosh, there you go. Nose down, level the wings, perfect. That is a perfect attitude, uh, unusual attitude recovery. That's a perfect one. 529, we are east of Lake Ashby at 2100. Your controls? Your controls. Your controls. So here we are in the nose low unusual attitude, and initially Jonathan reduced power and reduced his bank angle before raising the nose. That's proper technique, but the power wasn't reduced enough, which is contributing to the airspeed and descent rate increasing. This again is just going to show why we practice these maneuvers. Yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, you can come out quite a bit. Yeah, you can idle there it. There it goes. Yeah. You can idle it, honestly. There it That's is. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Right? Throw it to idle. No, no, throw it to idle. Absolutely. Reset yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you still had it at 1900 and right. it was just increasing, increasing, increasing. Yep. So you can idle the power. Absolutely. So crew, uh, level it out again. It doesn't finish until we're stabilized. 
I won't let our boy off the hook until the plane is fully stabilized. That means no descent or climb rate, no fluctuations in altitude, heading or airspeed. This is to instill a discipline in him to fix it as quickly as he can, without rushing and doing wrong things of course. In this example, it's taken him 30 seconds to stabilize the aircraft again, a time that I'd like to see get reduced as we practice more and more. 30 seconds of a nosedive or unusual attitude or anything could be the difference between life and death at a lower altitude. All right. Stable? Stable. Cool. Yep, stable. Mic controls. Mic controls. Mic controls. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little chandelle. Ooh, a chandelle. We're going commercial now. We're going commercial. So, 30 degrees of bank, full power, constantly changing pitch. Keep the bank, constantly changing pitch. Get to the 90 degree point. There's about the 90 degree point. Now I'm going to start holding the pitch and reducing the bank angle. Reducing the bank, reducing the bank. Nose could have probably been a bit higher. Oh. On the 180 degree heading. Oh, there's the stall warning. That's what we want. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Oh, let's level that off. We don't want to lose altitude for the chandel. Cool. Uh, and here we go. And you have the flight controls. My flight controls. Your flight controls. Nope, get that power out. Get that power out. Oh, that's right, we're descending. Exactly, now we're in the caution range. I do. Uh huh. Notice that. There we go. That's better. Alright. Ready as she goes. Table. Stable to me. Yeah, we're stable. Cool. Yeah, we're good. You're controlled. Holy cow, you got us low. Yep. <laughs> I got us low. Yeah, you got us low. <laughs> I got us low. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, that power's got to come out, not going. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll do another shot down this time to the left. It's good practice for me, this. All right, we're below that. 30 degrees. Full power. Constantly changing pitch. The bank. 90 degree point, start rolling out the bank. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Keep rolling it out, keep clearing it. I want to hear that stall warning there. And under the restricted nice. cell, 6,000 feet over the parking lot, we're going to be doing stint. There's a 180 degree point, and... Lake Ashby, Pexter, Skyhawk, 70 kilo, 2 miles east, Lake Ashby, 2,600, slow flight, eastbound. And your controls. My controls. Your controls. Yes. Traffic. Skyhawk. Yes. Six Fox Trot. One four thousand five hundred simulated emergency descent. That's better. That's better, man. The lake. Power came out. Leveled the wings. Raised the nose. Perfect. Now at this point. You can hear the, 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 we've slowed down. Right. So you can start getting that power back in quicker. Yep. Now we're, we're fairly low and we want to start stabilizing so we don't lose any more. There you go, cool. All right, you, you stay in control. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's go and do uh, something else. Want to go back out? Uh, no. This is where this episode ends, on YouTube at least. Those that support Ludix Aviation on Patreon and the Welcome to the Sky tier have an exclusive video to watch from this flight, along with other perks for being a patron. If you're interested in supporting, you'll get exclusive access too, so head over to my Patreon to browse the tiers and see which you'd like to be part of. It's an interesting exclusive video to say the least. Thank you to all my current patrons whose names are in the description, which incidentally is where you can find all the links you'll need for everything that I spoke about in this video. With all that being said, all that's left for me to do is to thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the making of a fight.